Plauk, Arkansas, a small, sleepy little town with a church, a school, and a local store. Falk is also home to a nightmare. At times so real and so terrifying that some residents packed up and left in the middle of the night. Falk is the birthplace of the Swamp Stalker of Boggy Creek. I could see the muscles in, the, in his back. Then I heard something walking up on me from behind. He was in a state of uh, near hysteria. Very aggressive. I mean, it sounded like it was just feet away. Eyewitnesses report seeing a creature seven to eight feet tall and up to 300 pounds. It's very muscular, with a chest approximately three feet across. Its body is covered with a coat of long, reddish brown or black hair, and it moves quite fast on two feet. In 1972, the movie The Legend of Boggy Creek was made depicting actual events. They unfolded at a rural home near Falk on Saturday night, May 1st, 1971. The film features a three-toed man-like ape, over eight feet tall, that terrorizes local residents. In the movie, law enforcement officials and local hunters track the beast, but to no avail. The Boggy Creek Monster seems to be a swamp monster that's ape-like. Renowned cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman describes the real terror that gripped the area. It really stirred up people. It became uh, very enraging, but also very frightening. It was in the newspapers. We thought it'd be a two or three day story and it would go away. And, and then it made the wire services. Dave Hall, a local newsman, drove to Falk to investigate. I got a call one morning from a doctor at the emergency room that, that I knew and he said, I've got a guy down here that says he was attacked by a monster. The man's name was Bobby Ford. He'd been visiting his brother Don at his rural home just north of Falk. And so we went off down to Falk, and by the time we got there, the Ford family had a U-Haul trailer backed up to the front porch, and they were putting furniture in as fast as they could get it in, and they said, we're getting out of here before dark. Earlier, Don's wife Elizabeth had been threatened by the creature while home alone. Late that night, the beast would return, this time attacking Bobby in the yard, just east of the house. They heard a noise outside, and Bobby Ford went outside. family then brought him to the hospital and uh, he was most definitely in shock. Don Ford and a friend, Charles Taylor, chased the creature and shortly after midnight they shot there at it is. seven times with shotguns. It's been a long time since I've seen someone that scared. It wasn't long before terror would again grip the community. In July, just two months after the Ford incident, strange tracks were found in a bean field just outside Falk. We got a call that uh, some, some people in that area had seen some unusual tracks. H.L. Phillips was the deputy sheriff of Miller County and responded to the scene. I took several plaster casts of the tracks there and I recall it seemed to be three large toes uh, on the foot, which was quite a bit different from a normal five. MonsterQuest has obtained the photos, and they will be re-examined for the first time in decades. This analysis may allow us to identify a link to the Ford attack. There is no precedent for a flat-footed animal to have a reduced number of digits, particularly three. 
Dr. Jeff Meldrum is a professor of anatomy and anthropology at Idaho State University. In 1976, a discovery was made in Tanzania, Africa, that has greatly advanced the understanding of how early man evolved to walking on two feet. Meldrum will use it as the basis for his research. The study of footprints has only matured here in the past couple of decades with the discovery of the Laetola tracks from uh, uh, Tanzania. The African tracks were found to be over 3.7 million years old and allowed scientists to question the evolution of feet. Now there have been occasions where, due to inbreeding, a mutant feature may take hold, as exemplified in this photograph of an individual with a condition that results in essentially two large digits with a prominent cleft between them. In Africa, there's a group of natives in which this trait has become so fixed in the population that uh, they're referred to as the ostrich people. The science of determining tracks is not simple, and Dr. Meldrum will need time to analyze these. Any animal that has a plantigrade foot or a foot that is flat on the ground with the heel touching the ground will have five digits in contact with the ground. A bear is a good example, and for that reason, bear tracks are often confused with human tracks or sometimes even attributed to Sasquatch. There are some who believe that confusion and misidentification with known animals may be responsible for the strange creature sightings. Any time that you're hunting or fishing, you know, you, th there's a chance that you can misidentify something. Mike Harris is a wildlife specialist with the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. He has lived in this area his entire life and says lack of evidence is an argument against the creature. I've hunted and fished in and around the Sulphur River wildlife management area ever since I was, you know, big enough to hunt, and I've never seen anything that, that couldn't be explained. Some type of physical evidence would be required to substantiate that it was here, such as tracks, uh, hair samples, etc. The Arkansas Game Fish Commission's official stance uh, concerning um, any type of creature like this is that it just doesn't exist. This man needs no convincing that something is out there. He believes he came face to face with a monster. Something was walking up behind me, and uh, as I could see it, it was uh, big and black. In October 2000, Stacy Hudson, an avid bow hunter, had set a deer stand in the Sulphur River Wildlife Area, less than 10 miles from Falk. I had hung my climbing stand up the day before on a tree down by the uh, river. The next morning, I walked in, found my tree stand, turned around backwards. Hudson repositioned it 12 feet above ground and began to hunt. After just half an hour, something approached him. As uh, it got under my stand, I felt something touch my leg. It was very large. It was black. When I bow hunt, I'm camouflaged from head to toe. My bow, my arrows are camouflaged. The only thing that's not camouflaged is my broadhead. Hudson was terrified by this broad daylight encounter. I've never experienced anything like that before. I think the broadhead cut him because he screamed really, really loud. And I started cussing. Eyewitnesses often report loud, wild, animal-like sounds during their encounters. But Hudson says he heard a completely different kind of sound. It let out a very loud yell, and it ran back toward the river, breaking limbs, trees, everything. Stacy Hudson has periodically returned to the area in an attempt to gather evidence of what he saw. Recently, he found some unidentified scat that will be analyzed by a DNA and parasite expert. I walked in the woods where I had my sighting to see if I could find the same tree I was hunting out of, and I run across some uh, large-sized scat. You know, I've never seen any out in the woods that big, especially an area where there's no cows or horses or anything like that. 
Scat or animal feces can be tested for parasites and DNA material to try and determine its origin. Monster Quest will launch its own expedition to search for more clues about the possible existence of the Swamp Stalker. Boggy Creek is part of the Sulphur River Basin. The Sulphur River flows into the Red River, which meanders south across Arkansas and Louisiana, before finally joining the Great Mississippi. Sulphur River Wildlife Management Area is the largest intact wetlands ecosystem uh, that's still associated with the, the Red River drainage. It's very narrow in places, uh, but I would say it's probably 14, 15 miles long, something like that. The team has chosen this maze of creeks and trails because it will give them their best chance at finding the Swamp Stalker. If there is such a creature, it's most likely a primate of some sort that is adapted to the area. Rick Knoll will lead the expedition. He is a field researcher and photographer who specializes in cryptids, or unknown creatures. His team is made up of Mark Porter, Ken Stewart, and Stacy Hudson, field investigators from the Texas Bigfoot Research Conservancy. White-tailed deer, wild turkey, and small game animals all inhabit the Sulphur River area. And another team member, Jerry Hestan, says there are perils as well. There could be some dangerous animals in here. There's all sorts of venomous snakes and occasional alligators. The team is preparing to search the rivers and bayous. They will perform both day and night reconnaissance. All right, guys, we need to descent this. Okay. We know a lot of hunters use this camo when they go hunting. But the animals can smell us also, so this should help a little bit. Pestan's kayak is specially equipped with a remote-controlled video camera. The kayak provides him the perfect vantage point to record any unusual activity along the river. Roughly 250 miles northwest lie the Wachita Mountains. Together with the Ozarks, they are the only major mountain regions between the Rockies and the Appalachians. The other half of the expedition is already targeting another hotspot of reported sightings. Yeah, it'd be nice to check both those cameras today. Outdoor wildlife specialist Mark Peterson and expedition member Daryl Collier have positioned cameras at likely trail crossings when they come across a dramatic find. It's, well, it's not there. What do you mean? Camera's on the ground. Monster Quest is investigating reports of a large, hairy creature said to terrorize locals outside of Falk, Arkansas. Native American legend tells of a large, hairy, wild man that roamed northeast Arkansas as early as 1834. In 1851, the Memphis